All right, folks, welcome to another edition here of Crancis Corner, and it's Crancis Corner presents the Jacory Harris Show. That's right. Each week, me and Jacory going to go over the Canes game that was and the Canes game that is this weekend coming up. Jacory, welcome back to your own show. Have you ever had a Jacory Harris Show before? No, nah, man, it's exciting, man. I want to keep this going. We got to we got to <laughs> make this bigger and better every week, man. Right. It's good for the ego. It's always nice for the ego when, when your name's in the in the show some uh, title somehow. <laughs> so there you go. Sometimes right you gotta there. put that ego aside though. You gotta put it aside. <laughs> right. It's, it's like that thing at the door when I walk in the door. My wife's like, put your ego here, leave it here at the door. Yes, yeah, sir. Dad and your Zach when you walk in here. There's no Francis <laughs> Corner here in this house. Uh okay. Fam, you obviously blowout mm-hmm. game. We were expecting that. Cam Ward, another good one. I know it was fam you, but 385 yards in mm-hmm. the first week. The guys had 689 so far in two games. I got to read you this before you could comment. Very happy to read this too. The other two on that list, by the way, third Hurricanes quarterback in the last 25 years with at least 600 passing yards in the season's first two games. In 2001, Ken Dorsey, and in 2009, Ja'Cory Harris, 656 yards in those two games. Now That's Cam Ward, the third on that list. Pretty good two games for this guy to open up with all that pressure that I keep talking about with you on Cam Ward. Yeah, it has been, man. You know, like I said, I just wanted Cam them to go out there and just show and display that, you know, we can still put on the same type of game as we did with. And you don't want to take nothing away from them. But at the end of the day, you want to go see the guys execute. And I felt like Cam, he displayed just that. Right, right. And he did. He played. I mean, he literally was almost perfect in these two games and one against Florida, obviously fam, you a different story, but he's been playing great. The game plan looks fantastic using the receivers yes. and the tight ends. Like we talked about also another touchdown for Arroyo in this game. Mm-hmm. They're using the tight ends. Jacory, something we talked about preseason wise, that's going to be big for them. And they did it. That's going to be big because in, in college football now, you really don't see that. And you have a lot of smaller linebackers going against these big guys and Arroyo and McCormick and all these guys are huge tight ends. They're your old school tight ends. So to see them go out there, they're faster, you know, elusive guys um, and, and catch the ball and move in space. It's cool to see that because that's, what's going to be your, your, when you, you need go to, you need to go to play and you got to go to the tight ends, right? Big right. targets. And those, like you said, big targets, that's a huge thing yeah. for him. When you have a guy like that and, and right down the middle or a guy that could be a deep threat now, down mm-hmm. the middle of tight end. That's amazing. Obviously, we know what to get from the wide receivers at this point as well. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just been a really fun game plan to watch for these two games. I know, obviously, FAMU, Ball State, not the you know top 25 material or whatnot, but that Florida game and now looking at that yeah. FAMU game, now looking forward to Ball State, the offensive game plan is there. We see it. And now it's being executed well uh, as well. You know, like even Damian Martinez, Fletcher, both guys got into the game as well. Mm-hmm. I liked having the starters in there, you know, and, past that second quarter into that third quarter. I like that. I mean, I know you don't want to put a hundred points on a team, you know, something like that. And they probably could have, if they kept their starters in the whole game, but it's fun to see that kind of go through halftime and then fun to see the backups come in there and get some time too. This is a good time of the year for those guys get their feet wet a little bit. Also. It is a fun time. You know, um, I used to, I used to struggle a bit when it came to, uh, you know, the smaller games, not to take away from any of those teams, but in my mind, I, those weren't really your stat building games back right. in the days because you know by halftime I'm out of the game. So it's like these two games would normally be a waste. Whereas these guys are going out there, look at you know, Cam is able to put up monster numbers again. Um Restrepo out there balling as usual. And you getting your guys in the mix. And 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 that was good to see that he kept them out there, let them, you know, get some stats, get some, you know, quality playing time. Cause we still got to remember Cam only has one year with these. Well, not even a year. He has a couple months with these receivers, with the offense. And um, according to them, they haven't even fully opened their offense yet, which it does. It doesn't look like they're running some, you know, um, crazy plays. It's just that executing at a high level. Um, So they might just be running their basic offense, but they're executing. So it's it's good to see that. And I love to see that. That's what that's what you want to see. Yeah, you want to see good execution against these teams. Mm-hmm. You want them to be the game plan to go as planned. You want all these guys. And then at the end of the game, like you said, you want these other guys to get a little bit of experience out there in gameplay, whether it's FAMU, whether it's Ball State, whatever the case may be. doesn't matter. Playing time is playing time. Getting out there in the field is getting out there in the field. It's good for all the guys out there. And you never know what can happen with an injury halfway through the season where one of those guys 
looks back at that game and thank goodness they did get some play time. So yeah, they feel yeah. a, little, a little bit more confident when they get in there as well. Um, I was l- looking at and reading into some of the post game uh, comments from some guys. And I saw Restrepo, like you just mentioned, and Mario talk about Cam Ward and call him the alpha dog, the leader of this team. Obviously that position and no one knows it better than you. You have to kind of be that guy. It doesn't mean you have to go around rah, mm-hmm. rah, screaming at guys, grabbing face masks and telling guys what they're doing right and wrong. But yep. you need to be the leader of the team and the alpha dog. And it looks like Cam Ward didn't take very long to, for him to be that guy. You know what's good about it as well? The guys like him. Like I, I've right. said it numerous times, the guys like him. Um, and that means he's able to establish his dominance as the leader. But he also has the personality that guys want to play for him. Guys want to be around him. And um, it's good to go out on the field and you know that you're playing with your brothers and people that you can count on. And you're not worried that, okay, yeah, this guy, he's just in it for himself. Or this guy, he's thinking about making it to the league. So his mind ain't even on the team aspect of the game. Right. So um, it's a whole, it's a different experience when you have it like that. That's why I like seeing um, the guys, you know, when they, they score a touchdown, him and Restrepo, I, I don't know what they're doing, but that's my <laughs> new celebration now. You know, we get a fire. I'm going to be out there like this, doing this. I don't know what it is. It might be something I shouldn't be doing, but, <laughs> right, <laughs> but right, right. It's, it's pretty cool, man, just watching them have fun. That's what it's all about. It's about right. having fun, man. And um, the the leadership stuff is going to come. They're going to be – they're going to go through some tough times this year. I know it's not going to be all perfect, all fun and games. They're going to go through some tough moments, and that's when we're going to truly know if this team is for real or not. Right. Yeah. The tests are definitely coming up once ACC yeah. play starts anyway, even South Florida coming up in Tampa in a mm-hmm. couple of weeks. That's not going to be South an easy Florida one. It's well. always a tough game. Right. It's not. Always. Listen, there's a lot, you, you did it. You played it. I mean, listen, you went to Northwestern. You came to Miami, probably played against 10, a million Broward, Dayton, Palm Beach kids whenever you played uh, any of these teams in South Florida or in the state, Florida State, Florida didn't matter. There were yeah. always kids, I'm sure from your school too, North- Northwestern kids on other schools that you played against. And South Florida, no different than that. That's going to be a big one in a couple of weeks. And those kids are going to be fired up to play, especially at home. I think the game's yeah. in Tampa, so it's going to be a big game for them. It's going to be a big game. And, uh, you know, I'm going to look at my schedule. I don't even know. I don't know if I'm working or not, but I might have to make that that trek up there and just go check it out. You know, they still got an uh, alumni, you know, uh, Demarcus Van Dyke. He's their coach. That's right. TV, so um i'm pretty sure he's gonna have those boys riled up ready to go against cam ward in that offense so it's gonna be a good game How but long? Now we're on ball state though. right right <laughs> no 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 can't look at we gotta look at you gotta look at ball state in front of you the they are not, no team is good enough right now and no team in coral gable is good enough right now to look ahead you got to win the game in yep. front of you at yep. this point i want to go back to one question about the leadership stuff um obviously we talked plenty about you coming on campus coming from northwestern all the hype all this all that how long did it take you getting into the uniform, getting into practice to become the kind of leader of that team as well? You know, because obviously there were plenty of guys, plenty of good players that came with you from Northwestern, but obviously mm-hmm. at that position, you're the guy. Jacory's the guy when he gets on campus. Did it take a long time for you to settle in like that? Like what happened? How was that? How did that play out? Um, I think <laughs> so. I got thrown in the fire pretty early. As yes, you did. Yes, you um, did. Even though we only play against Charleston Southern, uh, the guys were able to see during the summer workouts, during the springtime, because I graduated early. Um, you know me, the type of person I am. Like I'm, I'm here. I'm here to work. I'm here to have fun as well. Uh, but I'm also gonna back everything up that I'm doing or saying. And if I and if I don't, I take accountability. So that was one thing that I made sure um, throughout my college years is that I made sure I took accountability and guys respect that. Uh, if I throw an interception, even if it's not my fault, I'm going to take accountability right. for that. We could talk about this outside of that. Cause I don't believe in bashing my guys to the media. I don't believe in uh, putting other people um, in positions that they're not normally built for. They're not. So like, it's like right. receivers to me, receivers doing an interview is totally different from a quarterback during the interview. I'm mentally trained and mentally understand that, Hey, I have to speak this way. I have to carry myself this way. I have to say these things this way. A receiver, nah, it's the quarterback fault. (laughs) They could say things like that because they don't really focus on the overall picture of what we're trying to accomplish. Um, There's some that do, but for the most part, not a lot of positions uh, really do that, you know, focusing and stuff. So it's, um, I remember (laughs) we played against Duke my freshman year. 
And this was after, you know, me and Marv, were, we were one and two uh, quarterbacks and taking turns. And uh, I was obviously, I was the backup. And um, we were losing 17-7 to Duke. Prior to the game, every game I usually seen, I guess Trey Songs had, like, before the before the Florida State game, Trey Songs dropped his album, and I was singing. <laughs> <laughs> so that was that was one year I remember that one. But my freshman year, I almost, I'm always singing R and B. I'm always, you know, that's the spirit I am. That's the that's how I keep level head. And um, I remember singing in the locker room against Duke, and they was like, "Yo, Jacory, shut up, man! You making all this noise? Shut up!" And I was like, "Bro, this is how I get into everything. Just let me be." And it was older guys, the seniors, telling me to shut up. We losing 17-7. They throw me in there. We come back. I think I threw for like 340, ran for 114 yards. Wow. And we won 49-24. to 24. We shouldn't have been losing to Duke in the first place because I was right. mad at that. I was like, right. yo, why are we losing to Duke? And um, so that's what propelled me throughout the game. I'm like, nah, we're not going to lose to Duke. And we end up blowing them out. And then after the game, all the seniors was like, hey, bro, sing every game. Every game we need you singing. <laughs> right, right. So it's, uh, you know, everybody have their different ways of leading. Everybody's uh different. You just have to make sure you put um, action, you know, all your actions match up. That's all. Yep. No, that, listen, that, that's a great story. That's a fun, that's a, that's an inside story. By the way, you're only going to get stories like that on the Jacory Harris show coming from yes, Jacory yes, himself. Sir. You're not going to hear that uh, inside the locker room, R&B singing Jacory Harris anywhere else. <laughs> and that's the influence of Mayor Harris, by the way, getting you into the R&B music. So that's yeah, good yeah, yeah. too. I do have to, I do have to thank my dad for that. Absolutely. Up, all my dad had me listening to was like Sam Cooke, Jeffrey Osborne, um, you know, Luther Vandross, all, all that type of music. Like I got, so growing up listening to some of this R and B now, it's a little different. But then I still find my pockets of your tanks and you know you, Chris Brown. Sometimes he be right. popping now, but that's still my favorite artist. Yep. You know, you, you, people know who I'm coming at. <laughs> of course, I just think it's fun. I think it's fun because it's you know listen, it could be it, it could be a hundred different quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. in your position giving me that same story and a hundred different stories of how somebody gets amped yes. up and ready for a game or how somebody leads or how somebody becomes a leader in a game for you coming back at halftime listening to rmb tell getting told to shut up but going out on the field and showing the team that you could be the leader out there that's amazing and i think that's what cam's done through two games now too yeah. outside of the hype coming in here he's come in here and he's put it on the field and done well one in gainesville come down here and won the home opener ball state coming up so that's it that's how you become the leader but i was i was just when i read the post game and i was listening to the post game stuff and it's almost like restrepo and mario were reading off a script that they wrote together yeah. about how much of a leader he's become how in in a couple months he has become the one alpha dog for this team and i think it's great i think it's a perfect kind of situation for this offense for this team to be in especially in a year that could be special uh for that offense and for this team uh i want to go get yeah it contagious that's it if, yep. if it if it runs through the team, if Restrepo and that wide receiver core every week knows they're they're confident with with Cam throwing the ball, if that offensive line knows when they block their asses off, Cam's going to make a play. The tight ends too, the running backs, and then the defense feeds off that also. Look how good the offense is playing. We yes, got to step up and play. So it's a big thing for both. Speaking of defense, by the way, Tyler Barron three sacks over the weekend, four on the <laughs> season now. I told you before we started. This smells a little bit like a Greg Rousseau season where you're not really talking a lot about him, but he ends up with 12, 13, 14, 15 sacks. Four in the first two, pretty good start for him in that defense. You know what stood out, what stands out to me with him is is, is consistent, his motor. Uh, I watch, so when I watch plays, I look at things, like I got great memory, so I, I could break down some things and I remember it. Um, just watching him play against the University of Florida, you would see he wasn't taking plays off. He right. might not have made the play, but you still see him and him doing his moves, him actually beating the tackle, but the ball might be out, him doing his calls and pressures and doing all these different things. You watch him and you're like, okay, eventually these things are going to start connecting for him uh, because no matter what, as long as you keep fall – he's falling in love with the process of I'm going to work hard, I'm going to keep right. going, I'm going to keep grinding – it's going to work out for you. It's going to eventually happen. The sack's going to build up. The the uh, the pressures are going to build up. And then now, yes, it's fam you. So it's a lot of things. It's stat padding. Right. But consistently beating people's asses. 
So if you put it plain and simple like that, and and I like that. And it's um uh, it's something like I said, everything with this team needs to be contagious. When you see somebody else um doing well, it's no hate, it's no jealousy. I want to be like that person. I, I want to do this. I want to do that. Like I said about Bain, Ruben Bain last year, as a freshman, if I'm a senior looking down at this freshman and he's playing the same position as me, hey, I want to be like him. I want to find out what he's doing that's clicking for him to help me be better at my position. And people look at things from that perspective, they'll be a better football players and overall better people. Yep, totally agree. And I also think that at that position that Tyler plays, and especially those guys in the defensive line, Always a good thing when you look over to the left of your coach and it's Jason Taylor, former yeah. NFL Hall of Famer who could teach yeah. those kids. I told JT the day he jumped on campus and I said to him, I'm like, let me tell you something. Any kid that plays any close to the position that you played that's thinking about maybe coming here or going to two other schools, mm -hmm. maybe crazy not to go to the University of Miami just to learn from JT. And now that he's obviously the defensive line coach, one of these guys that are up front. I would send my kid, my nephew, my friend's kid, anyone that played that position to learn under Jason Taylor. That that's, is, one, that's one of the greatest things about Miami, too. Outside of the legends when they come back, mm -hmm. having a guy like that coaching. Yeah, that 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 is crazy. You know, for some odd reason, I totally forgot that Jason Taylor was the D-line coach. Right. That that It makes sense now because – I'm I'm starting to notice. I'm like, dang, man! Last couple of years, these these D lines are are they've been doing doing some tr tremendous work, and right. um, to see the growth and the development of these guys is is making sense. And um, I'm pretty sure Jason Taylor is going to be on, on the names and lists of uh, some head coaching positions soon as he if he keeps this up. I can only imagine at this point. I can't believe he still wants a coach. He's got kids in college. He's got kid. His kid at LSU is a, one of the better tight ends in the in the college football. It's amazing. And his daughter, by the way, is a hell of a volleyball player. There's a good athletic lineage coming out of those mm -hmm. Taylor kids around the country. Uh, good, there, and obviously, they have a Taylor boy on the defense as a defensive back on that team too. Safety there too. One of mm -hmm. his other kids. So there it is. There. Uh, we even got to see. I had to write his name down three times so I wouldn't mess it up. Reese Poffenbarger in there, who mm -hmm. before Cam Ward came on campus, that was your starter. That was the guy that was going <laughs> to. That was the guy that was going to run this team this year and be the guy. It was good to see kind of him get some playing time in these couple games, also. Yeah, it's always good to see anybody getting any playing uh, playing time in. And Reese, man, I remember watching him in the spring and watching him at uh, some of the camps, just looking at him throwing the ball, talking to him. He's a good kid, and uh, he's a kid that you want to see out there because he's a competitor. Um, I, don't, I know people haven't met, you know, all the guys, Cam and Reese, and, um, but he's a real competitor. He's one of those guys that's super athletic, freakishly athletic. You wouldn't right. even. Doing his thing. The guy was, he was, he was good. And, um, you know, unfortunately you got to, Stone Cold Killer Cam came in right. the building, but um, I hope he he learns and he um he gets the opportunity to really just develop behind Cam and learn some things and uh and then going into next year, who knows what may happen? He, it's, right. it's gonna be his show, so um he just got to be prepared and ready for it. Yeah, get some reps, get prepared, and it's gonna be yeah. your squad next year. Not a bad thing to to kind of wait around for too with the uh the the entire lineup that you said that yeah. this Miami team is right now. All right. I just well, seen something. It was a quote where it was like, hey, don't try to go to where the grass is greener. Just stay here until your grass gets greener. So look at that. Hey, yeah. So it's like, you know, a lot with the transfer portal portal thing, you know, right. a lot of people are leaving and uh trying to go find bigger and better opportunities, which I don't blame them, you know, make your money, do what you gotta do. But sometimes the grass isn't always green over there. Sometimes you got to water your own plants and water your own grass over here until it gets the green, green as you want it to be. Ooh, I like Confucius Chikori Harris here at the <laughs> end of the show. This is good stuff here. Hey. All State at home coming up here. What do you expect to see? Are we going to see a game like the FAMU game? I, I, I bet Ball State's a better team, obviously, than FAMU. No, no shots at FAMU there, but they mm -hmm. are. Uh, it's going to be a little bit more competitive. And let's just not hope it's one of these games where, Chikori, we're in the fourth quarter it's a it's a one score game in Miami struggling. I'd like to see Reese in there in the in the second half and some of those those backups if you can and have one of those type of games. What's the mindset going into the FAMU game, the Ball State game for for a guy, a player on this team? You've been in a lot of those type of games um, mm -hmm. beforehand, knowing USF's coming up in the ACC after that. Never look ahead, but sometimes it's hard not to. 
So this team is a little different. This team has, does, from what I see, they I feel like they have that killer instinct. Um, it's one of those we're not gonna play to our opponent's level. Uh, you know, I'm not saying any other teams were different or anything right. like that, but sometimes you know you never know with Miami. Sometimes you never know we might have a 21-7 game against FAMU, or we might blow them out by 70. Right. Uh, you never know what you're going to get. But I feel like this team has been a little bit more consistent than the teams in the past. Um, so I, I really, truly believe that they're going to go out there and display the same dominance that they have these last two weeks uh, against FAM in Florida, like they're going to do against Ball State. And it's going to be a good game. It's going to be well-executed game. I think they're going to keep the offense simple and just hand the ball off, run the ball, and also – hey, get all the receivers and everybody involved and spread the ball around. Let's see Sam Brown open up a little bit more. Right. Uh, let's let's get, um, you know, Jacoby George. He's balling still. Let's get him tight ends and loft and everybody involved. And um, I feel like it's going to be another overall dominant game to where we're like, okay, this team is different. Right. And, um, and if it's not, I would be disappointed. Even if we win the game, if we don't dominate um, – until we get to some tougher play. Yep. And it's happened. It's going to be right before your eyes in, a, in another week or two. It's going to be tougher play, better opponents. The whole deal is coming there yeah. at that point. All right, Ja'Cory, that's going to do it for us. Um, wow, man, Ja'Cory got some some fortune cookie stuff for us at the end of the show <laughs> here today. It was fantastic. Ja'Cory, have a good one, man. Go fight some fires. Do the good deed for the entire city of Dade County. We all love you for yes, it sir. as well. And we'll talk to you again next week on the Ja'Cory Harris Show. Yes, sir. Let's keep it going, man. All right, Miami Hurricanes Ball State coming up this weekend. That's Ja'Cory. I'm Zach. This has been the Ja'Cory Harris Show here on Cranston's Corner.